This video, let's talk about integrating PayPal checkout with wishlist members. So to get there, go set up integrations and payment providers, and then you'll click on the PayPal checkout link here. So the first thing that you'll need to do uh, when this loads up is go ahead and enable the integration. Now, if you've done it in the wizard, it will already be enabled. So you can then just pop in here. And then inside here, the first thing we need to do is configure wishlist member and PayPal to talk to one another. So we'll go ahead and click the configure button. And you'll see it asks for your API username, password, and signature. If you know what, there's a, what those are, where they are, you can just go ahead and grab them. Otherwise, you can click open, open this link here, and that will open you to a page here. Now, you may need to log in here. I happen to be logged in already, so it took me straight to the page. But if not, you'll just log in, and then it'll take you straight here. And you'll see API username, API password, and API signature. So you can just go ahead and copy those across here. Um, I'm going to do that real quick just because uh, these are sensitive details. I'm going to go ahead and blur those out and all that. So I'll, I'll copy mine over real quick uh, and then we'll jump back in. Okay, I've got my credentials copied over and now we can hit save and save and close. Although one quick thing. Uh, if you want to enable sandbox testing uh, and then you'll have a different API username, password and signature for that in the sand from the sandbox area in PayPal, you can go ahead and enter that here and do sandbox testing if you like. We're going to stick to the live stuff here. So I'll go ahead and I'll save that. And then real quick on the smart payment buttons. So PayPal has this thing with with PayPal checkout. You can use smart payment buttons. And it's going to display different sort of of, of providers uh, based on where someone happens to live. So if you want to support that, you can use smart payment buttons. Um, and there's some options in here in terms of you know the layout. So vertical, the or the layout, the size, the shape, and the color. Also the the funding sources. So with PayPal, they they have PayPal credit. So you can support that or you can support just card. So it just sort of depends what you want to want to do and if you want to support this and so forth. So I'm going to leave this off for now um, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit save and close here. All right. Now that we have that done, PayPal and Wishlist member can now talk to one another. So the next thing we need to do is we need to set up our product. So the way Wishlist member works when it comes to PayPal checkout is PayPal has PayPal buy now buttons. That's kind of a thing that you're probably familiar with. Well, we go ahead and create those buttons on the fly sort of automatically for you. So you don't have to go into PayPal and create a button, come back over and do all that sort of stuff. We just sort of create them on the fly. So the thing to do is come over here to products and now essentially you want to create a product for your membership levels. So we'll hit add new product and we can give this whatever name we want. So let's just call this gold membership. And when someone buys through this PayPal button, essentially what it is that when they buy this product, they're going to get access to this gold level. Now we can switch that, right? And we can say the trial level or this new level or demo, right? We can give them access to whatever level we want. Um, but it is one level at a time, as you'll notice here. Also, if you have paper posts set up, then enabled, you can give them access to a particular post. So that's in here as well. And same with pages and any custom post types will show up in here as well. Okay, so for this, we're just going to give them access to the gold level. Then you can choose whether you want a one time payment or you want a subscription. So for one time payments is pretty straightforward, just the amount that it's going to cost and the currency you want to use. For subscriptions, then it gets a little bit more involved. So you have the amount and the currency, but then you have the billing cycle. So do you want to charge them every one month, every day, every week, every year, or it could be every two months. You can sort of set up the billing cycle. Then you set up how, when to stop. So if you're doing it sort of a fixed term, maybe six months, then you would do six cycles uh, at one month, or maybe you're doing you know six years or six weeks, whatever it is, whatever your cycle is, how many of those that do you want? For a lot of cases, most cases, it's probably going to be never. It's just going to be an ongoing membership. It'll be when they, they cancel. Max failed attempts is how many times to try to charge uh, to charge them for this payment and that fails should we allow before we actually cancel their membership. So that's the max failed attempts. So that's the subscription settings. You can also set up a trial period down here. So Again, there's the amount for the trial and how long the, the, the trial is going to be. Seven days, you know, seven weeks, one month, one year, whatever. So you can sort of set that up here uh, as well. 
we'll go ahead and leave that off. And then the last one is you can ask for the shipping address. So if you want to ask for the shipping address, you can do that. Otherwise, you can leave that unchecked. I'm going to say that this is probably the way this is, is set up other than the amount here. The amount's probably the only thing you're ever going to have to change in here because most subscriptions are going to be you know, one month, never going to stop. Three is a good amount for the max, no trial period, don't need the shipping address, all that. So really the main thing that you'll probably have to change in here is just the amount. All right, so once that's done, we'll go ahead and hit save and close. All right, so now we have PayPal and Wishlist member talking to each other. We have our product set up and you can go through and set up all your different membership levels. If you're going to be selling every one on your site, just go through and, and set them all up. It, it won't take you very long to do that. The next thing that we need to do now is we need to put our buy now button on our sales page. And there's a couple ways to do that. You'll see that there is, we can copy the product payment link here. So if we want the actual link, then we can do this. And if you know, you're using some, some maybe Elementor or you're using some system Divi to, to create your pages and you just need the link and you want to, then you're going to create the rest of the button itself and just drop the link in uh, where you need it. This is what you can use. You can go ahead and copy this. Otherwise we can head over to a page and use the short code inserter. But real quick, before we do that, I want to talk about cancellations, All right? So cancellations are essentially handling how to deal with when someone cancels. So this first option is cancel membership at end of PayPal subscription. So what this does is the member, the when, whenever someone belongs to a, script, a subscription, they'll pay, say at the beginning of the month, and then that kind of gives them access for the rest of that month, presumably to content. And so you can have it so that when a member cancels, they actually get canceled at the end of the subscription period. So if I pay for June, I'm going to still get all of June's content, even though I might have canceled June 1st. Okay, so if you want to enable that for a particular level, you can go ahead and do that. Otherwise, um, the way it happens is a member is going to be immediately canceled after the subscription is canceled. And that's this option here. Okay, so if you want that to be the case, then go ahead and, and turn this on here. Okay, so that's what those these two options are, and that's what the cancellation section is. So I just want to cover that real quick. And of course, it applies to paper posts as well. All right, so now that we have all of that set, we have our products created, we can go over to a page. And if we drop over here, now we can go ahead and add in our button. And the simplest way to do this is just to, to pull up the classic editor. Now you'll see when I'm in here in, in Gutenberg, if you have if you have the classic editor plugin installed, then you'll see the classic editor and you'll see the blue uh, wishlist member icon and you can just go ahead and use that. However, if you're in Gutenberg, you can add um, of the classic block like this. And when you add the classic block, then the, the short code inserter is going to show up for you. And it may take just a second to lo load this up, just the, it's loading some JavaScript and so forth. Um, but once it does, you'll see the blue wishes member uh, short code inserter here. You can go ahead and simply click that. Come over to integrations. You'll select the PayPal checkout integration. And this in here, you can come in and select the product that you created. So we created that gold membership. And then you have some options in terms of the button. So you can use the PayPal buttons. You can use a custom image. You can use plain text. You can also set the button size. So if you want to make these a lot bigger, uh, you can come in here and do that etc. So you have some options in terms of that. And then you'll see what it does is it creates this short code down here. Now there's two things that you can do. You can go ahead and you can insert this merge code and it will insert it into the classic block. Or you can do what I did, which is I copied it and I, uh, I, I copied this and you could create a new block called short code and you can paste in your short code uh, there. So uh, however you want to use that short code, whether inside the classic block or whether inside of the short code block here, um, you'll still want to create it inside of the classic block, but then you can kind of use it however you want from that point forward. And that will then go ahead and insert that uh, buy now button onto your page at that point. When someone clicks that PayPal, that uh, buy now button, they'll be taken to PayPal. PayPal will sort of handle all the transaction part of it. When they're done there, they'll be redirected back to wishlist member to the registration page where they can create their account with their username and password uh, and so forth. And when they do that, then they're taken to 
the after registration page that you set for that level. So that's sort of the process that happens. But in terms of getting it set up for it to work, um, this is what you need to do uh, inside of PayPal Checkout. All right, so that's the integration with PayPal Checkout. Hopefully uh, that, that's helpful for you. And we'll talk to you next time.